Um, thanks to the organizers. It's very nice to be here. Um, yeah, so the title I had was uh, uh, The Dixmier Mergling Problem for D Varieties. Actually, it's um, <clears throat> a bit of an artificial title because it comes, it refers to a connection, a motivational connection, the problem in non commutative algebra. Of which I will say nothing you know, about uh, the, 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 the motivation coming from money. From the <clears throat> um, so this is um, around the um, uh, some questions around um, the finite, the, the sort of fine structure um, of, uh, of D varieties um, <clears throat> that I've been thinking about for not that long. So I'm not sure these problems are a bit open ended and. Not necessarily very clear where it will go, but um, I think it might might be of interest to some people. So let me start by talking about uh, about D varieties. Um, <coughs> so this is a formalism that Ali introduced um, to talk about um, finite dimensional in the sense that, uh, that Dave talked about this morning. Finite dimensional <coughs> differential algebraic varieties. Uh, it's a sort of an equivalent category. Um, but it has some, uh, maybe some, some advantages, um, at least expositional advantages, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll use this formalism rather than talking about differential varieties <coughs> directly, I'll talk about D varieties. So <coughs> let's fix um, uh, a differential field, characteristic zero. And I'll work with a single derivation. Uh, in this case, it really, it really does extend. I mean, might have the questions might have different answers uh, in, in several derivations, but I think it, it does. It's not so important that it's one derivation here. Um, um, and let's uh, uh, work in a large, um, so a saturated, differentially closed um, universal domain. Maybe I'll use the same uh, equation that Dave was using. Uh, so this is an extension. So my, my little k delta, I think it was a small differential field uh, working in a large differentially closed field. <clears throat> and let me recall what a D variety is, some of the terminology. So we start with a, an algebraic variety. So my varieties here will not be differential algebraic varieties. They'll be regular algebraic varieties. So say an affine <coughs> algebraic variety. This board is okay for people yeah, in that corner? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, defined over k. And um, let me recall uh, the prolongation. So tau v. So this is a, uh, another algebraic variety in twice as many variables, uh, where the equations are given by, well, the, in the first uh, n variables, you have the equations that define V, and then you differentiate uh, the polynomials. Um, and introduce new variables, but you also um, add a, uh, um, a term where you, this signifies that you take the you differentiate the coefficients of p. So p is uh, so here. This is uh, um, say all the all the polynomials in the uh, in the ideal of v, which lives in k x x n. So there's a polynomials of coefficients in little k, which is a differential field. So you can differentiate uh, the coefficients of p, and that's this additional term. So in the case when uh, little k is a constant field, when the derivation is trivial on little k then this term disappears, and this is just the equations of the tangent bundle. This is the prolongation bundle. And the projection onto the first n coordinates gives you this map. And we note that, so everything here are algebraic varieties, but you have this differential algebraic structure, which is witnessed by this map, uh, uh, NABLA, which acts on the on all of V, on the ambient points of V, points of V in the differential closed field, and map to the prolongation points. 
But this is not a, an algebraic morphism. This is the differential algebraic morphism, which takes a point to A comma delta A. So these equations are such that <coughs> if you plug in uh, delta A for the y's, then it does satisfy these equations. And so this does give us a section to the prolongation, but a differential algebraic section. OK, a d variety then. Um, Uh, is a pair, such an affine algebraic variety, together with a section. So S here is now an algebraic section. So this is a regular section. So over k to the propagation group. <coughs> okay? Um, so again, the data is entirely algebraic. It's an algebraic variety with an algebraic section to the prolongation, which is some other algebraic variety. The derivation just comes up in the equations for the prolongations. <clears throat> so if we write this in coordinates, it takes um, a point, say, uh, a bold blackboard bold k point to a section. So it's a, and then it's some polynomials, s1 of a up to sn section given by polynomials, but S1 to Sn be those polynomials. So uh, being given a d variety is the same thing as looking in the um, coordinate range of v and get taking um, an extension, a derivation on the coordinate ring which extends delta on little k. I, I denote it also by delta. This delta is the delta induced by S, so what is delta? Well, on coordinates xi, it's just SI of X1. So this is a, a map on the polynomial ring um, and uh, induces a derivation on the coordinate ring. Okay. And it's equivalent. If you look at the coordinate ring of an affine variety and you have a derivation extending delta, you look at what delta does to the coordinates, and that gives you a section from V to the propagation. OK, um, <clears throat> now maybe I should say something. I said I'm not going to talk about differential algebraic varieties. I'm going to talk about these d varieties instead. Let me say something about the connection. So the connection to delta algebraic varieties. Um, <clears throat> so suppose you have uh, a delta, let's say a colchin, an irreducible colchin cold set. So x now is defined by differential polynomial equations. And um, it is such that if you, it's finite dimensional. So if you look at the differential rational function field, then this is a finite transcendence. <coughs> yeah, so this is exactly the case of differential dimension zero. Algebraic dimension um, is the transcendence degree of this field. Um, then we know um, that this is actually a function field then, and so it'll be a function field of some variety v. And um, <coughs> um, you have a derivation on this differential rational function field, and so you get a derivation here on the function field of v, so this is for some affine variety over k. <coughs> Um, and okay, it's a derivation on the function field and not on the coordinate ring, um, but uh, you know, localizing. So you can choose v, so that um, so we can choose v, so that um, <coughs> delta on this differential rational function field um, uh, extends a derivation delta on the coordinate ring. Can, can you choose v smooth? Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Also, by localizing further, if you want. And oh, yeah. Of course, you can localize. Right. 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 So I'm just looking at the yeah. function field. So yeah. Okay. 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 I'm just looking at the. So this is really just a. Dif this is a, a, a differential. Birational data. Yeah, really, because it's only birational. It's only birational. Right. Yeah. <coughs> um, so because we're only interested in the birational information, we can choose v so that delta is actually a derivation on the coordinate ring, and so I have a coordinate ring with a derivation, and so I have a d right. 
So this delta, I look at what it does in the coordinates, and I get the p variety of the <coughs> And up to differential birational isomorphism, this so this captures this d variety captures the differential birational <laughs> uh, data that the Colchin holds out. So it's a way of, of looking at the Colchin holds out. I guess also on that side, if you would take a uh, birational equivalent uh, variety there, uh -huh. it has the same function field. So you have a delta up no on, on your d variety side. Yeah. So you have a delta operating on the function field, so it uh, operates also. Oh no, you have to localize perhaps. Yeah. You have to localize. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to be studying these irreducible culture closed sets of finite dimension, this is the assumption, uh, by studying these, these d varieties, which gives us kind of algebraic geometric way. Viewing finite dimensional differential algebraic varieties as a reduct of, uh, of algebraic geometry, in, the, in some sense. So, so you, you mentioned that uh, the whole thing works for partial. So what is the replacement for that assumption on the finite transitive degree? It's the same. It would be the same. That's why it's, uh, it, it works for partial, but it's not. The reason it goes through is that the difficulties that we've been talking that, that Dave spoke about in going to the partial case is uh, happen really when the transcendence degree is infinite. Yeah. When you, yeah. So in finite, I think I think it's generally safe to say that in finite transcendence degree, anything you do in one derivation, you can do in some. Oh. Maybe that's also insane. <laughs> but, uh, but, but certainly, that it's more certainly more true than. <laughs> more true than <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. So no, I would if I was in several derivations, I'd ask that the full. This would be the full full, full differential yeah. rational function field, and all the derivations I'd ask that still ask for it to be finite. So it's delta dimension zero. And you don't mean you don't need to find over constants in this whole. Oh well, I, I, so that's a, okay. That's the next thing I'm going to say. I guess well, no, it's not. But uh, I'll say it now. Yeah, that's an important case. In fact, a lot of what I'll say will be in that context. Okay. I just wanted to give the general so definition general. that allows um, yeah. uh, the derivation to act non-trivially on little k. <clears throat> and as I said, if if delta acts trivially on k, then this prolongation is really um, the tangent. The tangent bundle. Well, and so it's, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and so it's a nice, it's a much yeah. nicer situation. But uh, the definition makes sense as it is. Okay, and what we're interested in are the structure of the D subvarieties of this D variety. So, um, uh, what's a D subvariety? It's uh, so a D subvariety. Uh, is just an algebraic subvariety, closed algebraic subvariety. W contained in V, such that if you restrict the section to W, then you know it goes to the, the prolongation of V, but you want it to go to the prolongation of W. Okay, so it's, a, it's a sub, an algebraic subvariety compatible with the section, in the sense that the section lands in the right place, it lands in the prolongation of W. Again, if you're working with the constants, it should land in the tangent bundle of W. And this makes sense not just for things over K, so this is, you can, you can talk about this um, so possibly over a delta field extension, say f. Okay. <clears throat> so the prolongation uh, um, definition doesn't really depend on uh, the field of definition. If you take it, it commutes well with base change, I guess is what I'm saying. If you look at these equations uh, and you work over a bigger delta field, you get the same object. So the subvariety might be over parameters that are greater than oh, okay. the subvariety that D was over. Right? If uh, V is the D sub D variety associated with a, an irreducible culture closed set, mm -hmm. will this give you? So they all are actually. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And will this give you precisely the the uh, culture closed yes. subvarieties? Yes. Yes. So this is there's a real equivalence here of oh. category. So it's a way of studying the culture closed yeah. subsets of X. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, maybe I should, well, I, I'll introduce a notation and we'll see what it follows pretty easily from some, some observations I'll make, but that, the, yeah, so I haven't, I'm not giving a real argument for why this fully captures this, but it, it does and it might become clearer as I, as I say some more. Yeah, really, it seems so unlikely. You mean because of the birational aspect? Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was thinking yeah. this. Something about to I, I, I don't think it captures really the X. Yeah, it's up to it's up to it's up to. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, I think it's um, Okay. Yeah. No, well, I think. Uh, yeah. Right. Well. Okay. No. It, it, I mean, you. I mean, it's true that. So I will associate to this a culture closed set. 
which will be only differentially by rationally isomorphic to the x oh, here. Right. On the other hand, with respect to that, the, 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 the association here is functorial. So when you associate this, you, yeah. you associate the culture close set oh, okay. to this, that association does preserve right. something. Yeah. Right. And I'll, I'll introduce that in, 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 in very soon. In fact, this is what I'm doing now. So, um, but I can even talk about that, that, that culture and close set in the purely algebraic setting by just talking about a special case of a D sub variety, namely a D point. So a D point, I don't know if this is a good terminology, but it seems reasonable. A D point <laughs> is a point in the variety, but in the ambient universe right, of the differentially closed field, such that, if you like, maybe a little bit of a silly definition, but such that the singleton P is a D sub variety. <coughs> of course, it's going to be over, it's not going to be over little k, it's going to be over the field generated by the point. Yeah, so that's what I mean by D point. D point is just a zero dimensional D sub variety. <coughs> Um, working inside this, uh, this uh, universal domain. Now we have um, nabla here, which we know for, always goes to the prolongation. I just erased it. The nabla map. Also for the subvarieties, so the nabla has to take this, the prolongation, but the prolongation should be a point, so it's not hard to see that the prolongation of singleton variety is just the singleton P delta of P. So, so P being a D point is the same as saying that the section at P agrees with the nabla. Okay. Yeah? So a D point is, it could, could be stated in differential algebraic terms by writing down this equation, but it would just be understood as a, D sub, as a sub variety, which happens to be a point. Um, and so the note, this was the functor I was talking about. You can note by this, the set of all D points of the S. So when you, write, when you write V of K, you mean the D points? Nope. But when then, I write V S sharp Then maybe you I should mean, change yeah. the previous line just a little, like, because. This line? Yeah. 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 You just yeah. Ah, uh, P is a D point, yeah. Right, I didn't say this. If, 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 if P is a D point, then yeah. P is a D point, sorry. Yeah. P is a D point, if and only if, this section, sorry, four points. Those, so the D points are those points, algebraic points of the variety on which this happens to be true. So it's not an algebraic closed set. It's not. A, it's not an algebraic set. It's not a risky closed set. It's a Colchin closed set. So this is my Colchin closed set. This is a Colchin closed subset of K to the N. It's defined by the equations that say delta of um, the ith coordinate of my point is the ith polynomial in my section. Right, I wrote this section is given by n polynomials. So it's just a sequence of these equations. There's a cold and cold set. Defined. This is a differential equation, polynomial here, and it's just ordered. These are order one differential equations. You don't, you don't want it more the original equations? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, right. Yes, you're yeah, right. Inside V of K. Yes. So this inside V of K. Yeah. Thanks. So, um, <laughs> just to make sure that it, um, if k, the little k would be algebraically closed, there is no reason to go to this black ball with k, right? Because there is, because I'm looking at I'm right. looking at yes. the differential. This is a this is a Colchin closed set, yeah. not as a risky closed set. So it's witnessed in the you really want to work in a differentially closed field to see all the points. Let's say little k is, little is a constant, and you are right. looking at a section that isn't. So and delta. Okay, yeah, no, you need a differential yeah. field. Yeah, 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 that's what I guess, but I don't it's, it's, not, it's not algebraic geometry. It's, it's really a redux yeah. of algebraic geometry, and so you're not oh, going to okay, get yes. all the points. You, know, you, yeah. you get all the algebraic points, yeah, yeah. but uh, you might not see all the okay. D points. You yeah, have yeah, to work okay. it. So yes, it's, okay. it's, it's a way of sweeping the differential algebra in the background. Yeah, yeah, it's not really a way of getting rid of the differential. Yeah, yeah, okay. After all, this functor is an equivalence. Of category. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. And then, and now, if you take this this connection, then it's true that the Colchin closed subsets of this correspond to the D sub varieties of V S. You don't have to. It's not just a generic information. Now, it's, if you start, yeah. so when you talk about it in this sort of categorical sense, though, do you restrict your differential birational correspondences to those that don't involve proper derivatives? Uh, if yes, if you right, so that's certainly true in this. In this if you started with the closed right, so but if you start with D varieties yeah. and then just look at 
the right. sharp points, and that correspondence is is. So you preserve the dimension polynomial. <laughs> yeah, and and you do have now that every Colchin closed subset of this, right. even not order one, right. yes, is a sharp set of some. Because it will be order one, because in here, yes, S is given by right. yeah. Yeah, sorry. So that's the point, yeah. So, so once you fix your ambient D variety, then you have a complete correspondence between right. the Colchin closed okay. subsets and the D sub varieties. So the, the, you just take the morphisms, <coughs> the morphisms of algebraic variety. Yeah. yeah, so I should, I actually am not going to talk about it categorically, yeah. but you're right, maybe one yeah. should be a little bit. So what are the morphisms? The morphisms <coughs> are, uh, what I call birational. Yeah. So we have a section, a D variety, we have a section to tau V, and we have a section and W some other D variety of tau V. So morphism should be such that when you take the tau, they commute with the section W. When you take the W the W. Yeah. When you take the yeah, so that's what the morphism should be. Right. You should make this diagram commute. Right. So this is But should it also not commute with the nabla? There must be something there must be something. There's no, there's no nabla in the D variety. This is just something you can associate to the D variety. Yeah. And it will then follow yeah. that if you took sharps. Oh, okay, the knob has to come in somewhere, otherwise it's all algebraic geometry. Okay, yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. the whole point, yeah, yeah, okay. in some sense, is that, yeah, yeah, uh, okay. is, is that you're working with just the algebraic structure, and so yeah. the definition of morphism and everything should be done in purely algebraic terms. Yeah, but yeah. if you want to compare it to the Colchin, okay. which you do, if okay. you want to do model theory of them or something, at some point you're going to take the sharp points. Okay. Uh, and that, that's where the knob yeah. is. Yeah. So, on one hand, you're saying that you're working entirely inside algebraic geometry, but on the other hand, given V to get tau V, or given F to get tau F, yeah. You really need the derivative. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you're not working. I mean, in the in the definition of the equi yeah. in the okay. in the yeah. defining equations, the derivation yeah. appears, unless of course you're you're working over yeah. a constant field, which is the main example, which is the main case that I'm interested in. Okay. Right. So let me say that here. Um, <coughs> so an important case. Important case. is when k is contained in the constants. So we call that c, like uh, Dave was. So there's a constant, constant field, which is an ambient algebraically closed field. So suppose k is, this is just saying that the derivation is trivial on little k, then tau v equals t v. So we're talking about sections of the prolongations. And in that case, you have an example of a d variety by taking the zero section. Tangent model always has a zero section. So um, then, then you can take as an example S equal to the zero section. And that gives you an example of a D variety. Take any variety over the constants and take the zero section. That's an example of a D variety. And then what, what happens when you take, in that case, so this is the zero, this example, the zero section. So I'm over the constants and my section is the zero section. If I then take the sharp points, I'm just looking at the constant points of the algebraic variety. So the idea is that the, this is algebraic geometry over constants, right? This is algebraic geometry over the constants. So any algebraic variety over the constants, you can witness, it, 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 comes, it gives you a D variety, and there's a way of recovering the algebraic variety over the constants from the D variety by taking this sharp functor. And so what is really going on here is that the, the category of D variety, or the, 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 I don't mean category in some formal sense, but I, I guess one could. Um, uh, if you're looking at D varieties, then if among them, you have all algebraic varieties of the constants. So algebraic geometry lives inside the theory of D varieties as a, as a, as a reduct, as a sub, sub thing. So it's an expansion. So studying D varieties is, is, is studying things more complicated than algebraic varieties over the constants. Less complicated, say, than varieties over the ambient differential equals field. Yeah. You also see algebraic closed. I assume that, that boldface K is differentially closed, and so the constants are algebraic closed. Yeah. So I really treat this then as a universal domain for algebraic geometry over the constants. It's a big, it's a saturated so algebraic. This is called the capital K. The C is called capital K. Yes, yeah. The, C <laughs> the, the, the constants of this. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, <coughs> So this is nothing other than, yeah, you have, it's just a way of re, re, you know, talking about culture closed sets, and inside that you have the culture closed sets, which are algebraic sets inside the constants. And the general, um, but it's all, it's all culture closed sets of, of algebraic dimension, of, of, of differential dimension zero, of finite transcendence, finite dimensional ones. Um, and then somehow the, 
the general project in the study of D varieties is to understand these D varieties, um, sort of modulo an understanding of these ones. Right? So you, you say, okay, algebraic variety over the constants one, one knows in some sense, that's algebraic geometry. And how far are the, D, the general D varieties, how far do they differ from, from the zero section? Right? So you can, you can try to study a D variety by maybe trying to capture how much of it comes from objects like this. Yeah, so it's a, it's a way of, of studying uh, differential algebraic geometry um, relative to algebraic geometry. Um, could be that I'm making things uh, more complicated. Uh, so if, if one's talking to, to non-differential algebraists, right, then the, the D variety way is, is the best way to, yeah. to talk. But maybe maybe here one should it's better to stick with the Colchin process. No, 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 no. Uh, I'll talk about D varieties. Oh yeah, this is a mixed audience. It's a mixed audience, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let me give a name, maybe also uh, also bad. Um, and in, in the same way, so I'll call these trivial, <laughs> in a totally different meaning. Uh, uh, totally different meaning than days would, but possibly equally misleading. Uh, but uh, because the trivial things are algebraic geometry. Okay, algebraic geometry in this perspective is somehow trivial. There's no D structure. Okay, so by a trivial D variety, I mean a variety defined over something which is in the constants, and such that the section is a zero section. It's not, if, you, if you just work over the constants, but you allow other sections, then you're, then you're working in an, in, an, in an interesting situation. You, you, you pass the prolongation. But if you work over the constants and the section is a zero section, then you're not doing anything other than algebraic geometry. So that's, and that's the important case. By the important, so the important case is this case, but this is some other trivial case. So you, if you like, one could restrict our attention to where the field is in the constants, but the sections are general. Sections are not necessarily the zero section. They're just some regular section to the tangent bundle. Okay, <clears throat> um, good. And so one of the questions and issues that I've been thinking about recently related to things Dave said and the things Jim will say later um, uh, that fits into this studying D varieties modulo the trivial ones is, uh, is, is what I've been calling uh, the differential six me Maybe a problem, maybe. Just make this up, the name of this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, coming, coming, from, coming, from some, uh, coming from some analogy, but not just analogy, in, 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 in work um, from a couple of years ago with uh, Jason Bell, uh, Stefan Lamois, and Omar Leon Sanchez, um, there was an actual connection. So the, the, by looking at the differential dictionary method, you could say something about the classical non-commutative algebra problem that goes by the name Dixby. So it's not just an analogy, it's, uh, it has potential applications there. Um, <clears throat> but I decided not to talk about, about the applications. Okay. Um, so what is this? What, what, do I, what do I mean here? So let's fix a D variety. Yes. <coughs> okay. If you like, you can, you can work in the important case when K is uh, a constant field. Um, but you shouldn't assume that S is a zero section, or you can work in the general setting when K is just some differential. And now consider the following conditions. That the conditions on the structure of this D variety, in particular the structure of its sub varieties. There's three conditions, it's really two of them that we want to focus on, but um, actually from this analogy, the dixby miglin thing, three, three conditions show up, and so let me mention all three of the conditions. So this I will try to leave on the board. <coughs> so I should leave it to here, but is it visible to people yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this room is designed for... Uh -huh. Okay, uh, so the first one is the... Uh, Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is this no, it's uh, Actually, how about, how about I do it here? Because I wasn't going to use this. I can leave. <laughs> I think it's actually better for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is better. Yeah. 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 So one, one condition is the property of being primitive. What do I mean by d variety and primitive? These words come from the corresponding words in non commutative algebra. So I'm not going to explain the source of these words, but they're just the, ana the analogous thing. 
Um, so primitive would mean, yeah, the problem is I need maybe more than one board to do it. No, you can do it. Even here, even this is okay. Yeah. You can just write anywhere and it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's how I, I mean, Except, I mean, you, you hear us saying this, but yeah, this is, this is yeah, right? uh, So I'll do it here. Uh, primitive um, means uh, the following property. Take the union, look at all the little k points. So it's a, and first, a little bit artificial. It has to do with the field over which I'm working. Okay, the little k plays a role here. Um, which are proper <coughs> d sub varieties that are also over k. Let's look at all the proper d sub varieties of v, which are over little k, and look at all the k points, and take the union of all the k points, and ask that this is not equal to all the k points. That's what primitive means. It's a condition. We'll, talk, we'll be talking about these conditions to get a better feel for them soon. I just want to list all three conditions. Yes. K-point in V, is that not a G-sub variety? No, because it's not, so we will talk about these things, but no, because a K-point, uh, yeah, a K-point in V is not necessarily a D-sub variety, it's just a K-point. So the D-sub varieties are a certain subset of points, they're those points with the property that S creates an element. That depends on the derivation. Yeah, I see, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, so the D-points, the, the, the set of D-points depends on the derivation. Yes. So um, not every point is a D-point, so it's, yeah, and not every sub-variety is a D-sub variety. So you have, you're not looking at all sub-varieties, just the D sub-varieties, mm -hmm. and you're not looking at all, and, but you're looking at all points here, yeah, yeah. and all, all points, points here. Okay, good, no, that's a good question. Uh, locally closed is the second property I want to talk about. Um, so V has a, uh, well, it'll be unique, maximum, D sub variety over K. So all D sub, all proper, maximum proper, of course, as a maximum proper. And they're still closed. Closed. My D sub varieties are all closed. A D sub variety is a, is a, is a closed algebraic sub variety um, on which the section restricts. So I'm looking at. Um, <coughs> All proper d sub varieties over k, and I'm saying is a maximum one. So everyone is contained, not maximal, but maximum. Oh, okay. So it's unique because it's maximum. So it's <coughs> Sorry. It's yes. Yes. So these, this, this, and the next, and the third property have have, have very simple monothematic <laughs> meanings, which I will say. Uh, I'm assuming uh, v s is irreducible. Yes. So where did I fix? Fix yeah. and irreducible. Okay. I think it's okay to just work with k irreducible. So no, because it won't be it won't be isolated, um, right? Over k. So by the way, this one should also be k irreducible. Probably, well, no, maybe it doesn't matter here because you're doing union. Um, what do you mean? Um, over k. Why is this? What do you mean? I'm assuming v is k irreducible. I'm not assuming the maximum thing is k irreducible. No, no, the maximum one is not irreducible because I, I because if I take two, I should be allowed to take the union. Yeah, yeah we're definitely not going to maximum, one. right? So this, this is not irreducible, but this, these ones here are irreducible. No, the maximum one is just a possibly non-irreducible d sub. Yeah. It's just, yeah, so it'll be a finite union of irreducible, it'll have irreducible components. But does, so but does being locally closed, does that imply primitive then? Uh, yeah, so what are the implications here? Locally closed implies yeah. primitive yeah. In, yeah. Under, under a simple mm -hmm. assumption on K. You need some assumption, but yes, locally closed implies primitive. Yeah, so it's very, these things are not, these are, these are all related and the issue is really going to be when are these equivalent? The problem is when are they equivalent? And a lot of the equivalences are straightforward. This is really a complicated way of talking about things that, that bulk theoretically are quite, quite simple. But I, I, I think there might be some value in expressing them in this language of d varieties. But, but yeah. Actually, primitive is a little bit more subtle bulk theoretically. But, but anyway, locally closed. Uh, and rational are very clear. Rational is the third property. It says that if you take the constants of um, look at the function field, the rational function field of your d variety, which also has a delta on it. Remember, a d variety gives you a derivation on the coordinate ring, and so it extends to a derivation on the function field. And now this looks like a differential algebra statement. Look at this differential field, look at its constants, and ask that it lands inside the base. That's the third, the third property. Okay. 
Sorry? Constant's on the right hand side? I wrote constant. So that's constant. Constant. Yeah, what should I do? <laughs> constant. But you you used the JavaScript delta. You're right. You're right. You're right. right. I should use it. Constant of? Yeah, that, yeah I, I wanted to be explicit about what the differential field was. But yeah, this is a differential field because v is a d variety. So you have a derivation on the quarter ring, so you have a derivation on the function field. And now you look at its constants and you ask that this lands inside the loop. No new constants. In the no rational, constant. no new constants in the rational function field. That's what rationality is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so it comes up. It think comes is up. it enough for k to be algebraic? <laughs> uh, for what? Is it enough for, for what condition? To be true? No. 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 So I, we'll talk about where, examples and things, and we'll see. But, yeah. no. but the first remark is that we should take k algebraic equals. Yeah. Because, at least algebraic equals. First remark is that, well, this condition, at least, if just looking at this condition, I mean, it can, be, it can vacuously fail yeah. because k is too small. It might just not have any k points or something. Yeah. And then this will always be equal. So you can fail vacuously here if you don't take. So let's take, so let's assume from now on that little k is algebraically closed so that primitivity isn't, say, vacuously. Okay, so from now on, my little k will be algebraically closed. Not differentially closed, but algebraically closed. So it's still a small field, right? It's still countable. QL. Um, two. Uh, oh, I was, yeah. Right. Yeah, this. <clears throat> okay, that's an assumption, so I will leave it on the board that I will touch. Uh, remark two. Um, <clears throat> you need to look at other conditions. Um, well, so first thing is, what about the important case? So let's notice that if Vs is trivial, so remember this means that my little k is contained in the constants and S equals the zero section, then all of these fail. Uh, I guess I should assume it's positive dimensional. Positive dimensional variety, V is a positive dimensional variety, then they all fail, right? Is that uh, clear? No. So, um, so here, what is the derivation on the function field? So it's a zero section on the D variety. Yeah. So what's the derivation on the coordinate ring? It's the zero derivation. So what's its unique yeah. extension of the function field? It's the zero derivation. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, so this is going to be um, equal to the whole thing, K of V. So as long as V is yeah, it's positive dimensional, then it's not going to be contained. Yeah. Okay? Um, this one? Right. I mean, remember, this is just the point is when you look at the trivial case, you're doing algebraic geometry. So these conditions never appear in algebraic geometry. Right, right, right. So you just take um, k no, points, no and the k points are dense. If k is now algebraically closed, fortunately. So the k points of V are, are, are risky dense in V, and all the k points are d points. So the point here is that the point is in the trivial case, all sub varieties are d sub varieties. And all points are d points. Yeah, that's what happens in the trivial case. So there's not going to be a maximal one containing all the little k points of v. And same here, all sub varieties are. So you're looking at all the sub varieties, they're going to cover, they're going to cover all of v. So this is some, these are conditions that do not happen in the algebraic geometric redux. So if we're trying to study d varieties insofar as they differ from algebraic geometry, where they are not trivial, where they come from interesting sections, these conditions might come into play. So that's my second observation. Fantastically slower than I thought. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, so suppose that your little k is not. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Never mind. That's oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so my third observation is for model theorists. Um, it's uh, which I think all the ones have already noticed, but I'll say it anyway. Namely, locally closed is the same as saying the generic type. Is isolated. Generic type of the sharp point of the Colchin closed set is isolated. And rational is the same as saying that, um, saying that, so somebody tell me what should be generic type, some model pairs, is weakly orthogonal to the constant. Weakly orthogonal. So actually, 
Dave already explained uh, um, these notions, so it's not orthogonal, but weakly orthogonal, which means, in I guess it's equivalent in Dave's terminology where the relation, first of all, we're not in a strongly minimal setting, so the relation doesn't have to be um, finite to finite, it's just some non-trivial relation between the sharp points and C, and it, it should be, the weakly means it should be also defined over little k. Whereas, they maybe didn't make that explicit, but in the notion of non-orthogonality, this R, it's fine to find correspondence, was allowed to have parameters beyond the parameters of the things that it's related. Yeah. So this is a, a weak, weak orthogonality. Okay, but I'm, I'm not gonna focus on this so much, but they really are model theory properties. Um, so you might ask whether primitive has a model theoretic meaning. Well, I'll actually point out that primitive is equivalent uh, to, uh, to rational, and so it does via this. Um, so let's, uh, just to get a handle on these, these things. Okay, so those are some remarks, so now some observations. So, I, maybe I should say, so, so the general, yeah, the general question, it's not really, a, I don't mean this as an open question, I mean as the kinds of things one might ask, is when are these equivalent? Or what are the relationships between them? That's the general question. Why not use equivalent? equivalent. And so let me make some observations. <coughs> One, it's, they're not going to be equivalent in some general setting because uh, I haven't said much about little k. I've said it's algebraically closed. It has to be big in order for this not to vacuously fail, for example. Big in the sense of being algebraically closed. But if it's too big, then... Um, then um, uh, locally closed will vacuously fail. So my first observation here is that if k is differentially closed, <coughs> then um, vs is never locally closed. Now the point is there's too many d points, right? So you wanted enough points so that this is not some empty set and so that this obviously fails. But you don't want too many d points because d points are d sub varieties. And if you have lots of d points in k, d points in little k, then you will never capture them in a maximum right? because they'll be dense, they'll be d dense. Yeah? So when k, little k is differentially closed, then the d points in little k are closed. So the point is, I guess, so, right? So I don't know if I should sketch this. I mean, if you take any, so if you take w containing v a d sub variety, over little k, um, <coughs> say it's proper, then it's true that if you look at the sharp, so now I'm going to the differential algebraic geometry to, 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 to explain it, um, then if you look at this, this is not empty because it's a proper d sub variety. I, I guess I didn't say these sharp points are Zariski. The fact that this is differentially closed tells you that these points are Zariski dense in V. Yeah. Yeah? So working over differentially closed field, Set of d points are Zariski dense in the algebraic variety, and so this being proper will force this to be non-empty. But then little k, um, you know, is an elementary substructure. If you like it's also a differentially closed field, and these are all defined over little k. So I would get v s sharp little k. So the d points that happen to land in little k are distinct from the d points in little k. And so I'll find a d point that is missed by. So if little k is differentially, so I'm using here that little k is differentially closed, then every proper d sub variety will miss a d sub variety. Namely, remember these are these d points are d sub varieties. So the, a d point in little k is a d sub variety over little k. Right? And so there's too many d points, and so this would this would fail. But primitivity will also fail then. Uh, because everything is a d yeah. point. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, so uh, so we don't we don't want to, this, this, these conditions as stated are not actually um, very uh, um, very good. So maybe I should just call this section assumptions on K. Uh, and now we'll make another assumption to eliminate this. And the right assumption to make is that little k is the we want it to be algebraically closed. So let's say it's the algebraic closure of a finitely generated um, delta field extension 
of some constant field. <coughs> so if you like, the important case, if you, as I said, all of this is meaningful even when little k is over c. In fact, that's the main case, is, is when little k is actually all the constants. So then there's, this is no assumption. But if you want to go beyond the constants, you have to do, you shouldn't be differentially closed, and this is one, yeah, it's not far from its constants. It's finally generated over its constant field. As a differential field, it's finally generated over its constants. I haven't justified why that's the right assumption, but it certainly rules out this, this, this case. So if you like, just take k to b inside the constants, and then the, the part b is what happens. OK, and now with those assumptions in place, then this is a, this is a real question. When are these equivalent? Um, yeah, I was going to give proofs of the various known equivalences, um, but maybe I won't give proofs, but I'll say something about them. So now my assumptions on little k are a and b there. Um, so some of them are clear, right? So I guess this is observation two. So clearly, locally closed implies primitive, as somebody already pointed out. <coughs> uh, if you have a maximum d, uh, subproper d sub variety, then all of these will land inside that maximum property sub variety so they can't cover the whole thing. So using the fact that little k is algebraically closed to see that <coughs> the k points of the uh, So this uses k little k algebraically closed, of course. Um, what other direction is not hard? Primitive implies rational. Is also not too hard. Um, so maybe I should uh, um, just say it verbally, though it's not very hard. Um, yeah, no, I'll say it verbally, but if people want to see more details, I can say it. So uh, let's take, let's suppose you're not rational, and I want to find a point that, that omits all the d-sub varieties. I want to point a k-point of v, which is not containing any d-sub variety. So I have a new constant, f, right? So I have a new constant, f. Uh, so f being k of v delta but not in k. So now this is a rational function. I can view it um, as a map from v. I can view it as a morphism. So it's good I wrote down the definition of morphism. A morphism from v to a1 with the zero section. The fact that it's a constant, oh, okay. that it's a rational function. It's, a, it's not a morphism. It's a rational map. So this is a d-rational map. So f is a rational function from v to a1. And the fact that it, it, its derivative is zero will tell me exactly that the square commutes when you take the zero section. Yeah? It's just the meaning of being a constant. So I have a derational map from here to here. Now, uh, um, take um, any no, point. Non, yeah? non constant. Sorry? Non constant. Non constant. Yeah. Now, I want to show that every, um, that there is a point that's, uh, that's missed, right? Um, so, no, what do I want to say? No, there's no point that's missed. No yeah. point yeah. is missed. Yeah. 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 I want to show that every point is contained in a proper d sub variety. So if you take a point, suppose f is defined at that point. Then look at the level set. Yeah. Just take the fiber. Then because it's a d rational map, that fiber will be a proper d sub variety contained in a point. It will be proper because it's a non-constant map. So the, fi the, the level sets are proper. Right? <coughs> so it's contained in the fiber. If it's not defined in f, then it's in the indeterminacy locus. Mm -hmm. And that's a d sub proper d sub variety. Show the differential algebra. This is a dimorphism, and the, um, the the set of points where f is not defined is a property set. So every point of v is contained in a property sub variety. Either it's the d sub variety of things on which f is not defined, or it's on the level set. Of which is defined. So that's proof. Uh, primitive implies rational. So locally closed implies rational. And so the real question is about um, rational implies. Uh, uh, the real question is about. Uh, what? Rational implies uh, locally closed, right? That's the, uh, that's the question. Locally closed implies primitive, primitive implies rational. It's about rational implies locally closed. I'll come to that in a second, but which is false in general. So let's look at this. It's actually also true that rational implies primitive. So primitive and rational are really the same. So maybe I should have, yeah, well, it is right after here. Okay, so rational also implies primitive. <coughs> this I definitely will not write down. Um, though it's not very hard. So there was an algebraic argument that Jason Bell gave that shows up in this paper I was talking about. 
a couple of years ago, but it can also be done model theoretically. The point is, ah, this is if, actually, I think we don't know this answer in general, but if k is uncountable. Well, I don't know if I want to add that as a general assumption. Maybe, maybe I do, but it's on this part that depends on it. And the idea is that what rationality, this weak orthogonality, means, once you recognize this equivalence, uh, it means that, that your, your d variety has only countably many proper maximal d sub varieties over little k. So you look at proper d sub varieties are maximal, not maximum, but maximal, over little k. And weak orthogonality to the constants, um, ah, so if k is uncountable, and ah, I also need actually several of these, yeah, so the general, yeah, so also uh, this argument used it. Um, uh, this argument used it. I'm using the stronger form, stronger form of, uh, of, of assumption b. I'm really assuming here that little k had a constant, which maybe wasn't so obvious in the sketch I gave, but if you write it down, you need that. Um, and here, too, I'm assuming that the k is in the constants, but I'm also assuming the countable. Okay, so you have to add, you can find for these different cases, you decide on. Uh, maybe this is true without the uncountable thing. I couldn't, or maybe not. But, but um, uh, so k is over the constants, and I look at maximal d sub varieties over the constants, proper d sub varieties maximal. I claim there's only countably many of them. And the reason is that if there were more, then there would be, a unif there would be, a, there would be some deformation family of them. And that would give me a relationship between Vs and the constants, because this family would be parameterized by something in the constants, and I have a family, and so that's some non-trivial connection between the d variety and the constants, and that will violate weak orthogonality, so it'll violate rationality. Okay, so that's, that's a sort of monophoric way of seeing this argument. There is also a purely algebraic argument. So under some conditions, uh, what, rational. Now, now the argument continued then. Sorry, if only countably maximal now. Why? Oh right. Ah, yeah. Good point. Yeah, yeah. It was in the end. So there's only countably many, but okay. But now you can't be covered. So there's only countably many Ws. There's only countably maximal ones, but I'm taking a union here, so I just have to look at the maximal ones in this set. Mm -hmm. And you can't cover over an uncountable field. If you like, it's aleph one saturated. Okay, but one, one of them must be then also. Yeah. yeah. If you have over an uncountable field, you cannot cover a variety by countably many sub varieties. Mm -hmm. You can't cover the k points by yeah, counting yeah. the many sub varieties if k is uncountable. It's also algebraically closed. So, yeah. yeah. yeah? Okay. So, uh, so that's how you get that if it's not rational, uh, if it's uh, if it's rational, then it has to be primitive. If it's rational, there's only countably maximal d sub varieties, and hence they can't cover the whole thing, which is what primitive is. Okay. So, the, but the real question is um, is uh, so maybe it's observation five. Uh, is that rapidly? Is that is, is does rational imply locally closed? And the general answer is no. So you get an example from um, uh, my in kernels. Um, not totally immediate, just because you're, we're not working. We're working at D, so you have to translate to the D variety setting and. In, in, and to do that with Manning kernels, you have to look at this universal vectorial extension. But you really can produce a D variety where um, the torsion points are D points and they're dense. And so this, these Manning kernels, uh, we know that they're orthogonal to the constants, so they, they satisfy rationality. But there's no maximum D sub variety because the torsion points give you a dense set of D points. And so uh, you can't capture them. So that's that observation. Now that's of course, these are mining kernels on abelian varieties over fields that are not defined as a constant. So, so here I'm really violating the strong part of B. Uh, uh, you know, K okay, cannot be in C, you won't get this example, but you can construct one out of C, which is not very difficult. It shows up in this, in this paper with Bell and Leon Sanchez that I mentioned. So you can also, uh, can also find, can use this, can then produce uh, counter examples. Over the constants. <coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> um, and in fact, in dimension three. <coughs> so dimension here, I'm working with D variety, so I just mean algebraic dimension of the I mean variety. So in dimension bigger than or equal to three, in any dimension bigger than or equal to three, you get a counterexample. Uh, two rational implies locally closed. 
Um, <coughs> and it's also not hard to see, well, actually, oh, it uses something that in dimension two, it's true. Over the constants. Yeah. So it's true in dimension two over C. This example is already dimension two, but it's not over C. Yeah. Um, <coughs> okay. So that's what I wanted to... So um, doesn't that, that same example uh, show you that for the rational implies primitive, you need some assumption because <coughs> you just had like the if you just took like the Manning kernel, you would and you and you looked at the algebraic closure of the field of definition, you might only have torsion points, and so you might yeah. violate primitive. But you but if you were not over the constants, you'd still be rational. Right? Yeah, not over the constants. Yeah, not so, yes, yeah, you're yeah. right. So this rational implied primitive really used the constants. So. Um, I should say it as a side, and this is what, what Jim, related to what Jim is talking about, if you weaken, so the, this equivalence, if you weaken locally closed by not asking that there's a maximum D sub variety, proper D sub variety, but that there are only finitely many co-dimension one D sub varieties, then that's a theorem of Rashovsky's. It's a Joanna Lu theorem that, uh, that they gave a, a particular case of. Uh, Rashovsky's implies that, in fact, and it gives an equivalence. Rational is actually equivalent over the constants to, um, to having only finally many co-dimension one things, which is a weakening of this. Because, yeah. um, so, uh, and, and that's what uh, we work with Jim, but Jim will talk about we we're generalizing in, in, in different ways, not working with the constants and several derivations. So, so there is a way of, sa of salvaging this potential equivalence by weakening the question of local equivalence. But what I um, wanted to ask, really, so this is sort of the open-ended question that I've been thinking about recently, is for which D varieties is it true? Does. So uh, make the strongest assumptions you like. So take little k to be in C, algebraically closed over the constants. Uh, when is it true that rational implies locally closed? Are there some conditions on the D variety, there's some D varieties for which um, for which it is true. Um, and uh, so here, take little k and take C. Oh, we can also ask the question more generally, which is assumptions of B, but um, um, <coughs> Uh, and so the one answer we have, so this is recent work, uh, so I guess this is work in progress, actually, but I think we know this, it's not very hard, and we, we now know this work in progress with, with some of the people I've mentioned already, Val and Julian Sanchez. Um, um, it's, it's true if your D variety embeds so it's a D sub variety. If your D variety arises as a D sub variety of a D group. So this is a D group over the constants. So that's an algebraic group? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I didn't define D group. Um, but yes, so G is now an algebraic group. And the section is a group homomorphism. It's over the constants, so it's a section to the tangent bundle. So the tangent bundle is another algebraic group. And you ask that the section be a group homomorphism. Can I write down the definition of D group? Or? So a D group is just a group object in the category of the D variety. So if you take a D group of the consonants, then uh, it satisfies this, and all of its D sub varieties satisfy this. And the D sub varieties don't need to be over the consonants. This is over any k. The D sub varieties can be over extensions. But the group should be over the consonants. Um, <coughs> Do you use the logarithmic derivative? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so um, really, it's the fact that What's behind this is the fact that if you take D groups of the constants, then, well, and there would, that's right, you have a, well, a three-step um, analysis in the constants. So you have the center, mm -hmm. and then, yes. uh, and the quotient there mm -hmm. is isotropic, as is, is, it comes from the constants, and then uh, in the center you have logarithmic derivative, and so the points where the section equals the zero section. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, that quotient is also, yeah. 
So the d groups yeah. of the constants are all three step analyzable, right. non trivial yeah. step analyzable in the constants. And the general theory behind this is you take any d variety that is analyzable in constants, then this is true. Um, and, and that uses a bit of differential value theory. Do you have any notes on that? Yes. Um, uh, oh, well, you, you mean that I could share. Yeah. Uh, I have two notes, but 